IB environmental students. Today we're going to be talking about trash, solid domestic waste. Sometimes in the U.S. they'll call it municipal waste. Can we even avoid making it? All right, let's jump right in. So there's lots of different types of categories of solid domestic waste that we have to outline. Um, and you can jump back and forth in this video to try to get these different categories. I highly recommend for any research projects that you could be doing on this to use online resources from the most up-to-date statistics on the amount of types of waste compared to what this video might have. All right, so um, for instance, uh, what is solid domestic waste just in general? It is garbage or trash which no longer has value to the producer. That doesn't mean it couldn't have value to somebody else. All right? And it will vary depending on lifestyle. Therefore, um, MEDCs make a lot more solid domestic waste than LEDCs. The types will also vary because of the way their lifestyle is. Especially food waste will be a lot higher in an MEDC. And we'll talk about that more as we move forward. All right, it'll also depend what kind of lifestyle they live and where they live. Are they rural or are they city? Um, for instance, and this I believe are really old statistics, so you will likely need to compare um, with some more up-to-date ones, but this is just to give you a brief overview. The U.S. uses at least 3.5 kilograms of solid domestic waste per day on average a person. Um, and... Um, that would be compared to 1.4 kilograms solid domestic waste in just the European Union. So even though those are both MEDCs, the types of lifestyles we live in are very different. And we could think about, well, what are the different components in, of the waste stream that are making such a large volume uh, or, or, or mass of a difference? Okay, so here are lots of different categories of the solid domestic waste. And again, this is uh, from the EPA from 20, uh, 2011. So you're going to want something that's even more up to date. Um, our yellow categories, you definitely have to know for the IB exam. It does not mean you don't need to know the other categories. But paper, glass, metal, plastic, and organic waste are some of the major categories. Organic waste can be broken into other even smaller categories such as yard trimmings wood, food waste, all right? So the way we categorize these things is different depending on what our goals of our research are, and that's something to consider, all right? Um, not all of these things are dealt with in the same exact way, and we're going to learn a little bit about that in class, but some of it, if you were doing research, you would need to look up on your own, and if there's any local regulations versus uh, statewide regulations versus United States. Now that we have some of the basics of types of solid domestic waste, although you're going to learn about those in more detail, what we really want to do for IB Environmental is describe and evaluate how we can manage this type of pollution and what are the better or worse management strategies depending on the type of solid domestic waste. So a lot of times we think about recycling as amazing and really the best. Um, but it's not always the best solution. So um, in the correct order, we would want to um, reuse or reduce. Probably reduce is even better than reuse. And then recycle is the least beneficial. And we've talked about that before in a previous topic. But um, let's learn first about reduce, which is the best option in general. Um, so this is just producing less waste in the first place. This is our most preventative strategy. This is the cheapest strategy because you didn't get the product or you're not being a consumer in the first place. Um, there's some cool things we could do at, at school. You could pack a no waste lunch. Maybe everything um, doesn't, nothing has, you're not using a a bag, you're not using plastic bags, you're only using things that could be used multiple times. And that would be pretty cool. You only take what you're going to eat. You carry lots of reusable items. So some of reduce ends up relating to reuse. Using less paper, but some of these things are really hard to do. Is that something that's likely something you could avoid as a student? Is it expensive potentially if we need a lot of computers? Reuse is really great. Um, it is to reuse the product again. 
Um, from here on out in the year, I'm going to highly recommend that you, if you haven't yet, get a reusable water bottle or a reusable um, kind of coffee or tea mug because you're in IB Environmental and showing up with a water bottle is a little wasteful. And I think it's something that we can easily do. And if you need help with the habit change, I can totally help. Um, but habit changes are something that you just have to put your mind to it and do a couple of times and then you get in the habit. Um, but that part's really hard because it is a lifestyle change. Even though it's a habit change, it requires less energy than recycling. Um, and it's fairly simple to implement once people are on board and you could do it on a household level. It is slightly harder to do on a school-wide level because, again, it's a habit change. People have cultural or personal opinions about not changing, but um, especially when someone learns a little bit more about the waste produced, they might be more likely to do something about it. Recycling is great, but is not the best method whatsoever. It is cheaper if the materials are sorted. That is what happens in our area. Um, they sort them for us. They're collected, separated, and processed into different categories. We'll learn more about recycling in class. The success depends on how much energy they can get and how much raw materials. Um, so not all types of things are equally going to produce as much energy or give off as much raw materials. For instance, uh, paper and plastic don't really recycle very perfectly. Pa uh, plastic is the worst. Paper is medium. Um, glass and metal work pretty well. They get a lot of energy back and a lot of raw materials back. But plastic is pretty horrendous. So that once again, plastic water bottles, not the best. Reusable ones, much better. Um, we're going to practice identifying recyclables and non-recyclables in class. And for our county, how you can deal with those types of materials, where they go, and what cannot be recycled and why it cannot be recycled. But maybe there's other places where you can send it to get dealt with. Um, let's say you can't do any of those three R's. We have a couple other options of how we have to deal with the waste. The first is incineration, which is referring to burning stuff at a high temperature. Incineration can be really awesome in the sense that um, it's going to reduce the volume, but it's also going to help us produce electricity. That's called a waste to energy plant. There is one in our county. Um, they might produce bad dioxins, which is a toxin in heavy metal deposits in the material they're burning and hopefully not in the air. We'll talk about air pollution and relate it to this too. Um, but the benefit is we're lowering the overall volume of the material because we burned it down, although it has to go somewhere and hopefully not in the air we're breathing. Um, but there's less space needed in landfills at least. So that kind of is nice. And sometimes we can even use the ash to build roads, which is kind of clever. For a um, kind of visual, this is how it works. They dump it. They pull it up in a big crane. Some of you guys might picture the Toy Story movie, if you've ever seen that. Um, they dump it. They put it on fire. The steam is what actually powers the electricity by using a turbine. And the ash is moved to a landfill. Landfills. Landfills are the most often used way of disposing of solid domestic or municipal waste, um, including even hazardous materials. That part's kind of scary because we don't want anything leaking out. Um, it is initially cheap, although we have to get the land. It gets increasingly more expensive for the people sending stuff into the landfill as it fills up. And you, if you use up too much space, it's not so bad. There is an aspect of NIMBY because not everybody wants a landfill in their backyard because sometimes we worry that they're not perfectly lined to prevent things from leaking or leachating out. We don't want anything going into the groundwater or into the soil where we're growing crops, especially if it is hazardous like paint or oils. We wouldn't want that at all. The other thing is, over time, because of decomposition, gas will be produced, and methane, which is flammable, 
can make an explosion, but nowadays most modern landfills have a way to capture and move the methane and use it actually as an energy source. So they also sometimes can do ways to treat the leachate so it doesn't over degrade the, um, the liner and ruin the landfill as a whole. The next option is composting. This is something that's only going to be possible for organics. Um, and we can talk more about composting and food waste in class. There's lots of initiatives. The goal is to return nutrients to the soil in agriculture, parks, or homes. But um, this is really something that m can happen on a large scale on MEDC farms and also on a small scale in your own home. Or it, there's been talk about trying to do it at schools. Um, it's, if it's something you want to investigate, you can see the possibility of doing it at ours, but it relates to soil conservation very greatly, but it's only possible to put organics. It often doesn't work well for anything that's got too much fats or meat. It won't work as well. All right, great job. Last but not least, here's a really great summary slide that you can pause and double check that you didn't get confused about anything. Um, if you feel like you've got all this information down already somewhere in your solid domestic waste notes, no need to rewrite stuff. All right, great. See you next time.